Each elementary library is now fully outfitted with 21st century technology. Secondary libraries are, or secondary students are one-to-one. -one. In addition, each campus was granted one full-time librarian, plus one paraprofessional per campus dedicated specifically to work in the library. <laughs> She has guided the renovation of the high school library to be student-centric, and now students are flocking to the library every chance they get. I've even heard that a high school student tried to bribe his teacher with money for a library pass. <laughs> <laughs> she is a visionary technology leader in her district. She doesn't just provide the technology, however. She expects her teachers to integrate it regularly. Because of this, librarians team up with classroom teachers on a regular basis to co-teach lessons. We all know what happens to student success when librarians are involved. With all of that said, it is my great privilege to introduce you to this year's winner of the Distinguished Library Service Award for School Administrators, Assistant Superintendent of Technology, Ms. Renee smith Faulkner. See if I can get my iPad to cooperate. Carrie, thank you for that uh, introduction. However, I will tell you that I was really excited when I was starting to come up to the table and I saw the pink crayon and I noticed it wasn't mine. I was at the red one next to Carrie who had the pink crayon, so I was a little disappointed I didn't get to get the pink one. So. <laughs> Um, thank you again for that introduction. I am privileged to have the opportunity to be representing the libraries as an advocate and friend of school libraries. Today, libraries play an important role in our schools. They are the learning hubs that bring our students and our parents, our community, and experts in our community together for the common purpose to learn. Today, I'm a very proud Assistant Superintendent of Castleberry ISD. Let me tell you a little bit about Castleberry and where we've been. We've had a long journey over the last five years. We are a 4A school district that borders the west side of Fort Worth ISD, so we kind of get lost in Fort Worth. We have seven campuses and serve approximately 4,000 students. We are the poorest school district in Tarrant County. The district encompasses one of the smallest geographical areas in Texas. It may be the smallest, I'm not sure. I need someone to help me research that, but I think I have some experts that can help me with that because we only consist of five and a half square miles total. According to our, but we're densely populated, and according to our last PEAM snapshot, our student population was 78% Hispanic and 19% white. We are also 82% economically disadvantaged. However, we have libraries that are equipped with teacher librarians in every library, paraprofessionals. <laughs> we have student aides, we have books, we have ebooks, we have digital resources, we have our databases, we have maker spaces, we have brainstorming tables where students were able to sit and brainstorm and write on our tables. We have presentation TVs, we have smart boards, we have digital signage, we have cable access that we can actually put our videos on. We have computers, mobile devices, iPads, Windows 8 devices, Xboxes, a Wii, and we even have created a virtual high school out of Minecraft, so you should come visit that, it looks really neat. And our latest addition that we're still working on is our Castle Bucks Cafe at our high school. However, all these nice things, this was not our story five years ago. In fact, I can remember about seven years ago when I was in the superintendent's cabinet meeting and the group was working on the budget. And they were looking at the next school year. And it was a year where funding was going to be cut. Budgets were going to be cut 10 to 15 percent because they were trying to keep teachers in the classroom and come up with some ways to uh, budget and keep our employees. 
And at this time, we even had teaching positions as teachers left. They froze the budget and froze the positions. We had one librarian that traveled among the elementary campuses. And so the hard questions came up in, during the budget time, and they said, well, do we need to keep our positions in the library? And I was sitting in there thinking, oh no, here it comes. We're looking at our libraries. We're probably going to look at technology too. And then the question was asked, how do libraries impact learning? And I sat there for a minute, and we all got to came to a consensus um, at the time that yes, we do need to keep our librarians, and let's just see how what how we can uh, revisit this next year. At that time, our librarians reported to their principals. They operated without a common goal or vision, and were a lot of little time to meet, collaborate, or plan for the future, or attend professional development. They had cut the travel. There wasn't really a central contact for our librarians, and they really didn't have a voice for them. As an administrative group, there was a consensus to keep our library positions. However, from the conversations that were going on uh, around the table or outside, I knew that if budgets got tighter, and if our libraries didn't rebrand themselves and communicate and promote their vision, that next year the outcome possibly could be different. So I thought about it, and the next year I asked if the library program could be reorganized and structured under me with the technology department. Some thought this was somewhat of a strange fit to have libraries under the technology department. However, prior to technology, I was a middle school English teacher, as Carrie said, so the English teacher and me knew that we had to have libraries. <coughs> And the technology, technology director and he said, what a great opportunity to work with our librarians and our instructional technology leaders to create a common vision for our libraries that incorporated and valued their expert knowledge on uh, being able to research and find information. And because of the exponential growth of digital information, it is more important nowadays for us to have an expert that can assist our students in deciphering the validity of the digital information that they're viewing on the internet. The fact was that the goal of technology isn't to replace the library, but instead to support the opportunity that it provides. So as a team, we slowly started rebranding our libraries as, as a 21st century learning commons. The librarians began to share books, articles, we were looking at blogs, we were looking at websites, and we were gathering information to find out what do these new spaces need to look like. How can they accommodate collaboration, communication, and support the innovation that was coming? They had conversations about the spaces, and uh, so we began to share them. I'm going to fast forward a little bit because we also, at the same time, were, went out for a bond election, and we were very lucky that the bond election passed. So we took, in May of 2010, we took all of our information and our research, and as a group, we went to the architects and began programming for two libraries and two new schools that we were building. We actually went through probably about 30 revisions because they really didn't understand the new form, that the, the new look that libraries and the new spaces that they needed to provide. And so I had a superintendent that kept back and he saying, go back and tell them what you want. Go back and tell them that it's not the old library anymore. And so now we um, are even utilized some money that we had in fund balance to, con to completely renovate our hospital library. If you were to visit it, it has long green walls and a crazy wall where books are displayed diagonally and by genres. It looks a little different. It has glass conference rooms without shades where kids can uh, go into conference areas, work on presentations and TV, and uh, practice their um, and group work and collaborate. However, we know that just rethinking and constructing new learning spaces is just the beginning. We have to get the word out. How do teacher librarians really rebrand their library? How can they communicate their vision? This summer, our teacher librarians attended what we had the Digital Leadership Retreat. And we focused on something called Branding Yourself as a Digital Leader. And it was based on a book by Aaron, uh, Eric Schoeninger on digital leadership, and it's called Changing Paradigms for Changing Times. And it's a great book that covers how to brand yourself as a leader. During this, 
I invited the uh, librarians, our teacher librarians, and they worked side by side with their campus administrators, the curriculum directors, and our instructional coaches because they are part of the instructional leadership team. So they, for the last two years, they have been working with our leaders in this capacity. Um, our staff thought, focused on how to use technology during this time to transform the learning culture. And so to, to understand how to use technology to do this, we used the uh, ISTE standards for administrators, coaches, and teachers, and we really studied how do you use technology to transform the learning that is going on in our libraries, in our classrooms, and how can we support that? We also looked at social media tools to improve communications. <laughs> do you communicate with Twitter? The great things that's going on in your library? Are you a tweet librarian, a Twitter librarian? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Uh, do you have uh, library hashtags that you follow for information? Because there's an abundant amount of information uh, on libraries through the different Twitter chats. There are also other free web 2.0 tools that I have on my website that we have some resources for you. Basically, how do you use social media to promote your positive brand? Because if you're not telling the great things in your library, someone else might have a different idea or perception. Are you updating your uh, blogs? Are you keeping blogs? Are you, do you have an electronic newsletter that focuses on all of the positive things that's going on in your library? Also, we use a personal learning network. We use an app called Symbaloo. And we actually use the um, Bloom's Taxonomy. And we have sample lessons that we have going on in the library based on the levels of Bloom's for our teachers to utilize. And we support that and create lessons to support that. Our librarians walked away from the training with a digital portfolio that they created in Weebly. And I'm going to give you the web pages uh, here in a minute so that you can go in and actually look at the uh, materials that we provide for our teachers. They address things like how do I support the campus improvement plan, the library improvement plan, and instructional rounds. If someone asks how libraries support learning, we have, the, we have used the power of technology to provide them the information. We have the websites, we tweet the right things that are happening. Our libraries have blogs that are updated. We provide instructional support for our students and our teacher. And we're highlighting the things that we're doing, such as Fun Fridays in elementary libraries, where our libraries get to travel from different libraries on uh, Fridays. And we have our puppet shows with Skype with authors. <laughs> we, um, <laughs> we have been, uh, actually, people have contacted us through Twitter and have provided us resources. We have authors that we have tweeted about that have actually engaged in conversations and have contacted us uh, through Twitter. Uh, and by the way, since we rebranded our high school library, we had an increase in 40% of our circulation, and that is great for our library. In reflecting back on the last, the last five years, the transformation did not come easy or without a few bumps in the road. Or without a library in saying, are they really ever going to remodel this place? And I would say, yes, just hang on. We're, we're going to get to it. If your library program is similar to where we were five years ago, how do you begin the transformation? Here's my answer. You must be gritty. You must have the grit to stay the course and the determination to rebrand yourself as an instructional leader in your library through the use of technology, but not just the use of technology, but the affordances that it can bring you. Yes, we have great things happening in our libraries, but this can be the story of every school library. Begin developing a shared vision. Demonstrate your ability to persist through difficult circumstances. Be ready and promote yourself and your programs through the power of technology. And this can make all the difference in your library program. For librarians make a difference, and they do impact student learning. If someone asks me how libraries are impacting student learning, I can reply. Our librarians communicate, they curate, and they share. And if you look at our website, you will see all of the great things that, that they are doing. I also have provided, if you go, our, our homepage is castlebarryisd.net. We have put up a article that has a photosphere of all of our newly remodeled libraries. 
Fiona Web is, it is a app that you can load on your iPhone, and so we've taken a panoramic view. So if you would like to look around our libraries, and also it takes you to a link of our campuses that has our digital portfolios that every administrator has made with the resources for our teachers and our students and just snapshots of all the things that the students are doing. Thank you for this honor of being able to be an advocate for you guys. And follow me on Twitter because I'll have some more information at Faulkner R. Thank you.